my name is Anika. I'm part of the Data Science Discovery team. And in this video today, we will be doing a question on NFL and hypothesis testing. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it says Tom is a big Green Bay Packers and a Rodgers fan. He claims that the average number of touchdowns per game is around 2.4. Um, but Dave believes that Tom might be inflating these statistics, right? So from his uh, debut until this, um, he has played 175 games. So Dave randomly selects 66 of them, right? So basically that is going to be our sample size N um, and finds that the sample average number of touchdowns to be around 2.076 with this standard deviation, right? So here it says do a hypothesis test and basically state your conclusion. So here, um, the first thing to kind of calculate is what type of hypothesis test we are doing, right? Are we basically dealing with proportions or means? Is it a one-sided or two-sided? And is it a z-test or a t-test? So here, we're actually going to be doing um, a, a z-test, right? And you, we know that it's going to be um, a one-sided test, right? Because it says that Tom, um, the, the Dave believes that Tom might be inflating these statistics. So the real statistics should actually be less than what is reported, right? So the null hypothesis here is that our mean is going to be equal to 2.4, right? Because that is what is claimed. That is our status quo. That is what is claimed to be true. But it says here that Tom might be inflating Roger's statistics. So the actual claim that we're trying to um, basically prove is that these the 2.4 mean is inflated, right? So that the true mean, the true mean is less than 2.4. And you might be thinking, right, what does mu even stand for? I know that mu stands for mean, but what does it stand for in this context? Well, mu is a true, the true, basically, average number of touchdowns um, per game, right? So the, the mean here is a true average number of touchdowns per game. And this is, uh, you know, like the population average, right? The, the hypothesis test always use population parameters, right? So this is why we're going to be using population parameters such as mu or p for proportions instead of things sample statistics like x bar or p hat, right? Those are all wrong. We're going to be using population parameters. So that's why we always write mu here. So again, uh, the alternative is that mu, the true average number of touchdowns per game is less than what is actually reported, right? So let's go ahead and actually report this right so we decided that this was a one-sided one sample z test right because we're only dealing with one sample of data right which is the random selection of the 66 games so that's going to be the one-sided one sample z test and the correct null and alternative hypothesis is that mean was going to be equal to 2.4 right because that is what is actually claimed on the website right we will not be using the sample mean here because again we're using those population parameters so 2.4 2.076 is for the sample that we selected, right? So the mean is going to be 2.4, and the uh, alternative was that the mean is less than 2.4, right? Notice that all the ones that say 2.076 or ones that say differing numbers are wrong, right? So this is going to be the null and alternative hypothesis. And now all we have to do is basically compute the test statistic, our p-value, and basically our conclusion. So to find the, the test statistic, right, what is our actual z that we're going to be dealing with here? Well, that's going to be the same as our z-score formula, right? It's going to be the x minus the mu divided by our standard deviation. But in this case, since we are taking the sample, right, our standard deviation is actually going to be what is known as the standard error, right? So it's going to be that sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. So it's going to be that sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So here, our z is going to equal the x, which is basically the sample mean, sorry, x bar, which is the sample mean that we got, which is 2.076, right? So 2.076 minus the mu. The mu is a population parameter of 2.4. And then divided by basically our standard error, uh, which is going to be our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So it's going to be something like 
which is our sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of n. And n was 66, so it's just divided by the square root of 66. Right? And you can kind of do this um, basically in the calculator, or you can use Python. Right? If we were to use Python, then it would be something, <clears throat> then it would be something like using our norm dot cdf function right because after you find a z-score let's kind of go ahead and graph uh, or draw out what our p-value represents right so we know the sample mean is going to be um sorry the population mean is 2.4 right and our z-score well we know it's going to be um something to the like negative side right because it's going to be 2.076 minus 2.4 because our sample mean was actually less than the population average so let's say something like over here is our z-score, right? Well, here, um, since I want to be testing that our true population mean is less than 2.4, we're actually going to be testing um, having the one-sided one-sample z-test where the tail is to basically the left, right? Because we want to see if it is less than the actual population parameter of 2.4, right? So when we do, um, when we try to calculate this area, this area is actually what is known as our p-value, right? Because what is a p-value in statistics? It's basically the probability that we observe a sample mean as extreme as or more extreme than the one observed given the null hypothesis is true, right? And if that probability is very small, the, the probability that we observe, you know, such a sample mean as extreme as or more extreme than the one observed, assuming the null hypothesis is true, if that is very small, then the null hypothesis basically cannot be true, right? We have enough evidence to say the null hypothesis is wrong, right? Because we cannot achieve this sample mean given the null hypothesis is true. That probability is so small, it cannot be simply attributed to chance, right? It must be, it must be the fact that the null hypothesis is wrong, right? So that's why when we try to calculate our p-value, that's just norm.cdf. Uh, and our sample mean is basically going to be 2.076. So you can either do norm.cdf of the z-score, which you calculate here, or you can use the other version of norm.cdf where you enter your x value, which is 2.076, comma, our mean, which is 2.4, comma, our standard error, which is going to be 1.219 divided by square root of 66. So both of these are kind of uh, valid approaches to calculating your final probability, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and basically do this using Python. So I want to calculate, I want to define all my variables first, right? So my x bar is going to be 2.076. My mu is going to be 2.4, 2.076. Mu is 2.4. And then my standard error is basically going to be um, the sample standard deviation, which is 1.219 divided by square root of 66. So 1.219 divided by square root of 66. So now when I calculate my p-value, that's just norm.cdf. Let me import norm first. Import norm. Norm.cdf of my x bar, mu, and my standard error. And when I print out p, it's going to give me basically the same thing. And I could have done p equals norm.cdf of my z-score, that's also kind of a valid approach. So here, my, my p-value is actually 0 0.01, <clears throat> 0 0.0154, right? So here, p is equal to 0 0.0154, right? And here, it said our alpha value, our significance level is 0 0.05, right? So this p-value is definitely less than 0 0.05, right? What does this even represent? Well, this means that as we kind of mentioned before, right, this probability is so small, right, the probability um, of basically observing our sample mean, sample mean or something more extreme, assuming, right, given basically, assuming our null hypothesis h o is true right so since this probability which is basically 0 0.015 is less than of our alpha 
equals 0.05, we basically have enough convincing evidence, right, to prove that our null hypothesis is incorrect, right? We have enough evidence to to prove that Tom might be inflating Roger's statistics, right? Because given the null hypothesis is true, there's such a small chance that we would actually observe this sample mean that the null hypothesis simply cannot be true, right? So our final um, conclusion is basically that we have, and this is kind of just a general guideline, right? We have enough convincing evidence, right? Because we did the hypothesis test, we got the p-value, that's our evidence, right? Convincing evidence that the HO, uh, convincing evidence to basically reject the null hypothesis, right? To reject HO, um, basically, the, which basically means that you know, uh, Tom is inflating Roger's statistics, right? Tom is inflating Roger's stats, right? So that's kind of the, the result that we got from this hypothesis test, right? So, and, and that's kind of the, the use of these hypothesis tests, right? Is that how can I prove or disprove a claim Right, and what are the steps that I need to follow in order to show, in order to basically show evidence that you know this claim might be wrong, right? That basically my results cannot be simply attributed to chance, right? So here our test statistic was, I guess we need to calculate that. So z was going to equal x bar minus mu divided by s e. Let me just go ahead and print out z as well. So our z is going to be negative 2.159. That's correct. And then our p-value was just the p.norm.cdf x bar mu or s e. Or you could do norm.cdf z. They're the exact same thing. And we got basically 0 0.05, 0 0.015, which is correct. So and finally, what is the correct conclusion? Right, It was that we basically reject Tom's claim. Right, so the A and B are false. So it says we reject Tom's claim and conclude that there's evidence that the average number of touchdowns per game is less than 2.4. Well, that's that's basically what our alternative hypothesis was, right? If we basically reject HO, this we we are saying that basically we have enough evidence to prove that HA is true, which is the true um, average number of touchdowns per game is less than 2.4, right? So that's going to be our correct answer. D doesn't make sense because, again, it uses our sample mean of 2.0758, right? Whenever we deal with hypothesis testing in the um, hypotheses that we define, right, we always want to use the population parameters, which is basically 2.4 in this case, right? So be aware of conclusions that use sample statistics because we always want to use our population parameters, the basically the true population means the true number that the claim states, right, and not the sample means or sample proportions that we got. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.